can go ahead right now. Okay. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Flurn Live. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. We're so excited to bring you this live broadcast. It's a chance for us to connect with you and for us to edit your images here uh, live on this little broadcast. So a little bit of a different situation here uh, than what we've got going on with our pre-recorded videos. So we do have a chat window going on and that is on YouTube. And uh, Mike, say hey, oh Mike. Hey everybody. <laughs> you can't see him, he's off camera, but he's right over there and he's hanging out with you guys on chat. What's your chat name, Mike? Flurn. Oh, your chat name is Flurn. Yeah, yeah it's very Flurn original. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> what a coincidence. So uh, Mike is right here. He's on chat uh, under the name Flurn. So he's hanging out with you guys in the chat and he's gonna be kind of like my relay. So if you guys, you know, get his attention and he's like, oh, hey Aaron, so-and-so from this and this place had a question, uh, we, can, we can do the relay through him. So we have a, a real live uh, way of communicating with, I'm super excited. We have Angela, our video editor. She's outside of this room and she's running the broadcast. Angela, you're doing a great job. And I'm very excited about today's live broadcast. So previous to the broadcast, uh, we sent out a couple like emails and things like that. And people were able to send in their images on flurn.com slash live. So we have quite a few images that uh, folks have sent in and I'm gonna be editing your images live. Now we had a couple cool things going on. One of the things is because this is a live broadcast, uh, we haven't actually edited these images before. So everything you're gonna see is gonna be like our, our first time going at it. So you'll be able to like get an idea of what that process actually looks like. And for those of you guys who have submitted your images, there's a decent chance that we're gonna be editing your images here as well. So I'm super excited. Mike, how's the, how's the chat doing? On fire, lighten it up. Good deal. Well, everyone says hello. Oh, hello. Hey, everyone. Uh, really funny. We had r literally right before this live broadcast happened, uh, my my computer that I used to do Photoshop did an automatic update. <laughs> and it finished the update literally one minute before we started the broadcast. So that was a fun, fun time. But we are ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and jump in. Uh, Angela, are you good? You can see my screen and everything? Cool. Let's go ahead and start editing some images. I'm super excited. So we're gonna jump here in Lightroom. We're gonna start off in Lightroom and we've got some of your images up here and we're gonna kind of go in order. So if you see your images, there's a good chance that we'll get to these images. We've got two different broadcasts, by the way, this morning broadcast and we're doing another broadcast from four to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. So. These are all user submitted images. I hope some of you guys are watching uh, and we're gonna put these images together. And then later, I'm actually gonna save out these images as PSD files so you can download them on flurn.com if you're interested. Like, how did, how did Aaron do this? How did Aaron do that? Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna let you download this as well. And I've chosen images that are what I feel is a pretty good, uh, pretty good mix of some common problems that we all have as creators. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with our first image. Now, the uh, the person who submitted this image basically said uh, this is uh, like a food pantry, and they're trying to help you know get the word out for the food pantry and you know take some images uh, do for promotion purposes. Uh, but what they're running into is a white balance issue. Uh, their images are just coming out a little bit yellow. Now, uh, my first suggestion, anytime you find yourself having white balance issues in general, I highly suggest shooting in RAW if you have that available on your camera. So shooting in RAW basically allows you to w adjust your white balance at any point in time. So you can do that during the photo shoot itself or in post-production software like Lightroom and Photoshop. Now, in this case, we do have a JPEG, so adjusting our white balance is gonna be a little bit more difficult, but we can still totally do that. And for this, I'm just gonna stick here in Lightroom because I feel it's the best tool for adjusting things like your exposure as well as white balance. So the first thing we're gonna do is go up here to our develop module. There we go. And 
right here in our develop module, you'll see we have a temperature slider and a tint slider. And I just want to call quick attention to the temperature and tint. So temperature you can see is blue on the left, yellow on the right, and tint is green on the left and magenta on the right. So if you see any of those color casts on your images, if they're too blue, yellow, green, or magenta, this is where you want to do your adjustments. Now, an easy way to do this is to simply grab your eyedropper tool here, and this will actually choose your white balance. So I'm going to just kind of move it around my image a little bit. And basically the idea is to use what's known as a target neutral, which is something that would be either uh, like gray or white in the image itself. Now it's super common practice uh, for photography, especially if you're doing studio photography to shoot with a gray card. That way you can just, you know, get perfect white balance after the fact. A lot of us, you know, don't have the time to do that or don't know to do that. So no big deal. You can still just click on anything that's a target neutral. So I wouldn't want to click on like a brown box necessarily because it'll make my image like too blue. But we're going to try clicking on a just like what I think would be a piece of paper here that maybe should be white. So clicking on that, it's going to adjust our image and basically do it best to fix our white balance problem. And we can see it did a pretty good job. Now, if it's not perfect, it's not really a big deal. You can always just grab your eyedropper again and then click on another color. And my suggestion would just be to do this a few times until you find your image just kind of like works for you. Like, you know, when it gets to the point where you're like, oh, you know what? That actually looks pretty good. All right. And I'm actually pretty happy there. That, that was a few different clicks to get there. But uh, we, I just wound up on a piece of paper here, and I think that did a pretty decent job. Now, you can always make your adjustments here after the fact if you need, but you can see what basically happened is it pulled a lot of the yellow out of my image and then put a tiny bit of magenta in. And I think this does look pretty good now. Uh, I do think our saturation could just go up a little bit. Uh, instead of grabbing just the saturation slider, I'm gonna grab our vibrant slider and bring this up a little bit. And what's nice about the Vibrant slider is it will actually kind of leave skin tones alone. So if you have people in your images, I highly suggest using the Vibrant slider instead of the Saturation slider. Okay, well that looks pretty good. So we can actually check out a before and after here. Uh, let's just zoom out a little bit. So here's our before and our after. Uh, pretty big difference. And you can see it's relatively easy to do. Now, I just wanna uh, say this again. This is a JPEG, so my ability to adjust my white balance in a JPEG is a little bit limited. Again, if you ever find you're having white balance issues, I highly suggest shooting in RAW because it makes it much easier to adjust your white balance after the fact. All right, so that's basically how we take care of like a standard white balance issue. So I think this is actually a really, really good place to start with because I know we all have, you know, <laughs> I've been taking pictures for many years and still I'm like, I can't get the white balance right every single time. So no big deal there. Okay, well, let's go ahead and move on to our second image. We're just going to double click here. And we've got a pretty, uh, like a pretty, like nice image here. We've got, this is a studio photograph. Uh, and you can see we have our, our studio lights are actually in the image. So uh, basically my goal with this photograph is to remove the lights. What's the best way to remove this? Now, the photographer here did a great job placing the subject on a dark background, okay? So what we're gonna do is extend this dark background. So the first thing I wanna do, and by the way, when it comes to like background extension, object removal, that sort of stuff, it's a little bit more advanced. So I suggest doing that in Photoshop rather than doing that in Lightroom. So what we need to do now is get from Lightroom into Photoshop. So we're going to right click, we're going to go to edit in, and then my favorite workflow for getting an image from Lightroom into Photoshop is to open it as a smart object. And I'll show you why in just a second. So let's go ahead and click open a smart object in Photoshop. It's going to flip to Photoshop, go boop, 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 beep, boop, do its thing, and then open up our image. It's actually kind of funny. Normally, like we do, like, there we go. Because we do like recorded video that's all edited. Normally we just cut out this amount of time when 
<laughs> when computers are thinking, but now we're, we're actually got to show you that. That's kind of fun. Okay, well, here we are in Photoshop. Let's hit F for full screen. And first, I would just want to start off by going over, oh, I don't think my tablet's plugged in the USB. Would you mind plugging my USB tablet in here? Oh, of course. <laughs> my Wacom tablet. <laughs> I'm like trying to get this going here. All right. Oh, did anyone see, do you see Mike? Are you able to see the hands of Mike? He's a real human being, everyone. <laughs> All right, great. So first thing I wanna do is kind of illustrate why I open this up as a smart object here in Photoshop. And the big, big thing about this is because I opened it up as a smart object, now I'm going to be able to edit in Adobe Camera Raw if I want to. So all you have to do is double click right here on your thumbnail. So you can see my thumbnail itself has a little smart object icon next to it. So I'm gonna double click right there and it's gonna bring my image into Adobe Camera Raw, which is incredibly helpful. And here in Adobe Camera Raw, you can adjust your white balance, okay? And because this is actually a raw file, I'm gonna have a really great or like array of white balance here. You can see I'm able to really fine tune this. Okay, let's just undo that a couple times. And if needed, I could adjust my exposure here. All of these sliders that were available to me in Lightroom are now available in Photoshop as well through Adobe Camera Raw. So if you're going from Lightroom into Photoshop, I highly suggest opening as a smart object. That just gets you the ability to get back here. Now, I'm gonna just go ahead and grab a couple of things. I'm gonna enable our profile corrections for our lens. What this does is it knows what lens you're using, okay? And it will automatically fix distortion and vignetting as well. So just a good kind of like, pretty much I do this every time. Distortion will be sometimes the edges kind of look like they're curved in or out depending on the focal length of your lens. And then vignetting, sometimes the edges will just be a little bit dark depending on the lens and also your aperture of, of the lens itself. But that looks pretty good. Let's hit okay there. And really the big deal here was uh, just showing you guys that bit of workflow. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is uh, I wanna eventually have this subject completely on black. So I'm gonna make this layer invisible for now. I'm gonna grab a solid color fill layer and we're just gonna go all the way to black. There we go. So when I think about my layers in Photoshop, I think about like stacks of paper. So you have uh, like your background here and then some more of your background and then maybe your mid ground and then your foreground and the things that are close to the camera. So the things that are, would be like farther away from the camera, I want those on my lower layer. The things that would be closer to the camera, I want those to be on higher layers. So. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a background in this image. So I wanna make sure that's on the bottom and then I can put my top subject right over top of that, okay? So I'm just thinking like the depth of the image itself is correlated to my stack of layers in Photoshop. So we're gonna go ahead and I have this black background. We'll just double click and name it background. There we go. And I'm gonna click and drag this right under my subject and then turn my subject right back on. Now in this case, because my subject takes up the entire screen, okay, you can't see this background, but it is underneath my subject. So now what we really need to do is layer mask my subject so that all this isn't visible, but just my subject is visible. Now, if you're unfamiliar with a layer mask, basically what a layer mask does is allows you to hide, either hide or show a certain part of your layer. So to add a layer mask, click on your layer mask icon here. It looks like a uh, rectangle with a little circle in it. So we're gonna click there. And then what I'm gonna do is just paint black everywhere I don't want to be visible. So I'm gonna hit B for the brush tool. Okay, you can see my layer mask is white by default. Now if I paint black over top of my subject, okay, what it's doing is it's making my subject invisible there. I'm gonna turn my background layer off temporarily so we can get an idea. Okay, so painting black on your layer mask, you can see the transparent pattern on there. It just makes that area of your layer not visible so you can see through it, okay? Now, if you want it to be visible, all you have to do is paint white on your layer 
and there we go, you can, you can see your subject again. Now in this case, I wanna just fill this with white for now. So I'm gonna to go to edit and down to fill and we're gonna choose white as our foreground color. Hit okay and that just makes this entire layer visible. So basically my goal here is I'm gonna paint black over the areas I don't wanna see. So we'll paint black over top of you know this light. There we are and kinda of come right on down to there. Okay, and I've just got the regular brush tool. Now you can use selections, you can use all kinds of fun stuff. Wait, was that someone's hand right there? Oh, looks like there's someone's face right there. An eye, a mouth right there. I don't know, maybe it's a poster. I like seeing those little hidden goodies in there that <laughs> it's like, oh, there's someone back there. Maybe it's just my imagination, but that did look like someone's face. It's kind of fun. Okay, <laughs> getting off on tangents already. Perfect. So my goal here, I'm not gonna try to cut my subject out perfectly. Like, you know, all of my subject's hair, try to cut all that out. Like, you know, that to me is just, we don't really need to do it. it it's gonna take a bit too much time and it's not necessary at all. I'm just gonna do a decent job cutting out this stuff in the background just here with my brush tool. Okay, so we just layer masked all that area away, meaning it's not visible on this layer. So earlier, you remember we created a black solid color fill layer? Well, I'll just make that visible now. Perfect, and that's right behind our subject. Okay, so we still have our subject here over top, but now we have a black layer underneath our subject as well. Okay, so my next goal here is to take this area, which is dark, but it's not all the way black. You can see some of this area in the background, not completely black. So I wanna make sure to get it darker. And you can do that in a few different ways. What we're gonna do is grab a levels adjustment layer to start. And this levels adjustment layer, I'm gonna to use to kind of help me see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna kind of brighten my whole image up. Now I'm not gonna wind up leaving this visible, okay? This is not gonna stay on. What this is doing is it's helping me see what I'm doing. So we're just gonna call this, and I'm gonna just call this help. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this red. There we are. Now, what I actually wanna do is I wanna take the darks of my background here, where my subject is, and I wanna make them even darker. So to do that, I'm gonna use a levels adjustment layer. Let's adjustment layers. We're gonna to go to levels. Okay, and this time I'm gonna take my darks and make them darker. And you can see it's in fact taking my background and make it disappear, which is great. Now, I want this levels adjustment layer to only be visible where my subject is visible. So that's why we're going to use what's called a clipping mask. So Anytime, for instance, let's just turn a few of these layers off right there. So right now, the only layers I have on are the layers where my subject is and then this levels adjustment layer. I want this levels adjustment layer to only affect this layer underneath it. I don't want it to affect my background or any other layers. So to do that, we create a clipping mask. We right click here and go to create clipping mask. There you see, it bumps it over a little bit and puts this down arrow in there and that's how you know it's only affecting that layer. Okay, good deal. So while I'm in here, what I'm gonna do is take my black point and just bring it from the left to the right, and that's just gonna make that part of the image darker. So you can see it's taking my black or dark areas. Let's zoom in so you can see here. It's taking those dark areas and making them darker while still doing a pretty decent job of retaining light information. You can see it's not really affecting my highlights too much. It is a little bit, but it's affecting my shadows a lot more. Okay, so I'm going to take that and just bring it darker. And then we're going to take our highlight levels and just bring those up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we want to just choose a nice little balance that mostly affects the dark areas. Okay, so now what we're going to do is mask this because I don't want it to be visible over top of my subject, right? That would, my subject doesn't look good. Uh, I want this to only be visible in the background. 
So now let's go ahead and turn on our black background. There we are. And let's turn on this help document too. There we go. And you can see here that this does a lot to make my background darker. And this is pretty good for this area. I might load a different one for the rest of the hair. But what we're going to do is invert the layer mask on this levels adjustment layer. So let's click on the layer mask, hit control or command I for invert. And then I'm going to just use my brush tool. I'm going to paint white right here on the layer mask. Now, the nice thing about this process is I'm not completely cutting my subject out. I don't have to take a bunch of time with the pen tool and like really, really cut my subject out. What I'm doing is I'm just making the darks even darker. Okay. And now what I'm uh, painting on my layer mask is I'm saying, okay, well, let's have this really just be visible on the background, but I'm able to do what I would consider a less than perfect cutout of my subject, because for the most part, this is only going to affect those dark areas. All right. This will even help when you're doing areas like hair, right? So you can see it's making the background a bit darker, but for the most part, it's kind of leaving my hair alone. We're going to kind of feather that out there. Now keep in mind our little help layer is on. I realize our image doesn't look good right now. This help layer is, it's kind of exaggerating. It's making everything way lighter than it actually is. Okay. And I'm doing that to help me identify what is true black. Because if I'm using this help layer to make everything way lighter and an area still looks black, well, what that tells me is that it actually is black, okay, instead of really dark gray, because it can be a little confusing sometimes. You know, you're looking at your computer screen and you're like, is that black? Is it really dark gray? It can be hard to tell. Uh, so using these little help layers is just a good way of knowing, okay, cool. You know what? That is actually black. It's a good way of creating a very nice clean image. Because sometimes these areas will they'll look completely black on your computer, but then you'll look at it on a different computer, on the web, on your phone, and then you're like, ooh, that's actually not completely black. It's just really dark gray. And then you see all these artifacts that maybe you didn't want to be able to see. Okay. So this is just a good way of making sure that your image is completely black, your background rather. Okay. That looks pretty good. And really that's all I'm going to do with the hair for now. So let's go ahead and turn this help layer back off and see what we have. Okay. So what we did is we took that background that was pretty dark and I just made it all the way black. Pretty cool. Now, if I turn this help layer back on, you can see, okay, some areas are still not completely black. No big deal. What we do is create another levels adjustment layer. We clip that also so it only affects our subject. And then we take our black point and go a little bit more. Okay. And this one, I'm just going to be even more picky about where I make it visible because I'm not going to paint this, you know, around my subject. This is just going to be for these, the darkest of dark areas here because I want to hide those. So with this help layer still on, you know, I'm seeing, okay, cool. That's areas that are not completely black. And right around the hair, by the way, I, I don't really mind if it's got some color. Kind of looks like fire anyway, so that's cool. All right. And you can see we're able to take those areas and then turn them completely black also. So when we turn this help layer back off, what we have now is our subject on a completely black background. And I didn't cut my subject out. You can see we still have detail in our subject's hair. You can see all that detail there. Okay. We didn't, we didn't need to actually cut anything out of its background. We still have all this nice detail and that really didn't take that long. Now, in my opinion, using a solid color fill layer is totally the way to go because check this out. I can hit C for my crop tool and let's say I wanted to take my crop in from the sides. There we go. And then I wanted to bring my crop up. Like, let's say this is going to be on a magazine or something and you want some room for copy. 
I can change my crop there and look at that. My image is still perfect. It still takes up all that. It still fills that screen because the solid black fill layer is doing its job to just fill it with black. Or I could take my crop and bring it out here. Okay. And now we have like a banner image. There we go. I can go the other way with it too. Just take my crop and pull it out this way. Then you could have some words over here like, hey, come sit on this chair. It's, if you sit right here on this chair, you'll look really great. <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly what the words you would want to put there. But the idea is now our subject is cut out. Uh, they're on black and it's very, here we go. Let's just bring that back up. It's very, very easy to get them into really any size image that we'd like. So let's just go ahead and bring that back to about where it was beforehand. Uh, and there we go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this out. I'm gonna put it right here on my desktop. Here we are. Perfect. And we're good to go. So I hope that helps out, answer some questions. Uh, if you are photographing an individual on a light or a dark colored background, and you wanna extend that background, this is definitely the way to go. And in our next image, we're gonna do something actually kind of similar, but we're gonna do it with white because I just wanna make sure to show you on black and on white. Mike, how we doing? We're doing great. I think we're ready for a giveaway. We're ready for a give, I'm ready for a giveaway. I hope you're ready for a giveaway. There's nothing I enjoy more than giving away stuff. Oh, you know what? I would love uh, some of the stuff that we're gonna give away in my hands. Uh, are we able to grab, get Jack and... I think so. Let me, uh... You can open that door, Angela, if you want. I just, I want some of the stuff that we're going to give away, because I'm... We're getting the stuff. Are we getting the stuff? We're going to get the stuff. So we have some of the pins. Those are on my desk. We have some pins. We have some stickers. And then in the closet, we have the tote bags. So we're giving away... Yeah, throw, throw it over here. Or hand it to me over here. What's in here? Oh, headphones and an iPad. We're not giving away headphones and an iPad, but that just happens to be what's in the bag. We have a Flern tote bag. These are actually super cool. They're very strong, heavy duty, and they feature some of our new designs. I actually use these on a pretty frequent basis. There's literally my stuff is in this tote bag. So we're gonna be giving away uh, tote bags. This is what we're giving away right now, right? Because we have a few different giveaways, right? Yeah, so right now we're giving away a one year of Flurn Pro subscription. We're giving away a, a full year of Flurn Pro subscriptions? Are you kidding me? I, like, I didn't know that. <laughs> and for everyone who's getting a year of Flurn Pro, that's really like the big thing because, uh, well, with a Flurn Pro subscription, you get access to literally every single Flurn Pro tutorial we have ever created, including we just launched a new pro tutorial yesterday. It's like the culmination of everything we've ever done. It's called the beginner's guide to Photoshop. If you have any questions about starting Photoshop, this is the tutorial to go. Like it is the most comprehensive Photoshop beginner's guide we've ever released. And this is like where we're going to send everyone. So, uh, 10 years of making tutorials. This is like, Hey, start here, go here. Uh, I'm super excited about it. I want to check on the other pit. Do we have any other of the swag we're giving away? Can I get some of those pins and stickers? I want to sh I want to show them the stuff. I'm wearing. A, I'm, I am. Can I get a, a bag of pins and some stickers? I am wearing a pin. Check that out. I don't know if you're, you can see that at all, but it's a Flurn. It says Flurn on it. <laughs> we're really creative here at Flurn. Uh, you just put it in pin form and then. Oh, the contest is closed. Yeah, we're going to announce the winner here in uh, like 30 seconds. Yeah, we're going to announce the winner in about 30 seconds. How many winners are we about to announce? Just one. We're going to announce... We'll one at a time, but we have four more subscriptions to give away. Oh, okay. So we're going to announce in about 30 seconds. So the winner here, what they're about to win, they're going to win an, a year of Flurn Pro. Every, every single Pro tutorial we've ever created they're going to win a little swag pack, including you, you get some stickers, you get a couple stickers, 
You get pins. Look at all these fun pins that we have here. I'll just, I'll throw a couple at the camera. If, if you can catch one of these pins, uh, you win it. There we go. <laughs> How much does that camera cost? I'm so nervous. <laughs> oh, I think I hit it. All right, all right. We're, we're cutting you off. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, we're going to be giving away a Florin Pro subscription, and you get a tote bag and some pins and some stickers and all kinds of other fun things. So once people say... We have a winner. We have a winner. Uh, fantastic. Let me, uh, it is coming up here. <laughs> Glam and Grunge Studios. Glam and Grunge Studios. Congratulations. Thanks for joining today's chat. Super excited to see you here. You just won a year of Flurn Pro and some of this fun swag. How great is that? Glam and, I like your name, Glam and Grunge Studios. Uh, and how do they, uh, how, how do they get their little prize here? Uh, so we're going to have them email support at blurred.com. Okay. Glam and well. cool. Glam and grunge. We're going to tell you how to claim your ticket right there in the chat. So just keep an eye on that chat and we're, uh, that's all you need to win your prizes. I love giving stuff away. This is, we should just do this all the time. Uh, Fantastic. Well, I'm ready to get back into photo editing. How's that sound? Go for it. Let's go for it. I like these little giveaways. That's fun. Uh, good deal. So let's go ahead and get back into Lightroom. We're going to pop into Lightroom. And oh, by the way, I do want to mention that the other nice thing about opening, you go from Lightroom into Photoshop as a smart object is, check this out, it loads that image here in Lightroom also so you can see here uh very easy there's the before and the after you can see look at that and that really didn't take too long we've got our person cut out and i can be absolutely certain that this background is a hundred percent black because now we know all the necessary steps to make it that way so our next image this is from uh i believe they're a brother and sister duo um, sorry, I had a doc with everyone's information on it, but I don't have it in front of me right now. Uh, and they are designers. So what we're going to do with this image is something similar to the last one. We are going to actually take this and extend it perfectly on white. Okay. Something that they could use on an about us form or product form. I, I think photographing anything that's going to go on the web, putting it completely on white is just a a great way to go with. Uh, you see it all the time, you know, just not only uh, like products, but also people. So let's go ahead and right click. We're going to edit in and we're going to say open as a smart object in Photoshop. And this will work whether you have a JPEG, whether you have a raw image, no matter what you're using, that will definitely work. So let's hit F for full screen. Now workflow is going to be kind of similar here. Okay, we're going to create a solid color fill layer. We're going to make this completely white. Now we're going to take this solid color fill layer and put it underneath our subjects. There we go. And then we're going to click on the layer where our subjects are and put a layer mask there. So now what we're going to do is paint black on the layer mask. Let me just make that layer, the solid color layer visible. There we go. So we can kind of see what we're doing here. So I'm, I'm painting black on my layer mask here, where our subjects are. There we go. And it's hiding these areas. And I think this is a great uh, little lesson for us all too, about you don't need a big fancy studio and all kinds of expensive fancy equipment to create uh, really great images, uh, you know, on white or black. So what, this, what these individuals are using is uh, let's hold shift and click on this layer mask to temporarily disable it. They're using, you know, a white seamless piece of paper here. And you can see this is just in a regular location. Fantastic images here. And with just a little bit of Photoshop, we're gonna be able to completely get them on a pure white background and they're gonna look really, really good. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. And that's how I got my start in photography. I would just set these backdrops up 
in my house, my garage, whatever it is, and you know, take some images and then just cut out the rest of the stuff. And then it looks like, oh, you took this in a big fancy photo studio. But our little secret, you can just do this at your house. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and re-enable my layer mask here. Now we've got a little bit of an area here uh, that's a little tricky. Let's just zoom into it. So you can see that it's a little bit tricky here right around my subject. Okay, this is, I wouldn't wanna just take my brush tool and try to like mask this away because it's not gonna work that well. It's not gonna be very good as far as my, excuse me, as far as my edges are concerned. And I really just need to make sure I've got a good edge there. So let's see, the first thing we're gonna do, let's just go ahead and extend our canvas just a little bit. Good deal. And now I'm gonna hold shift and click on this layer mask, which just re-enables the layer mask here. And I think my, I'm just looking at my, uh, the line in the floor here and where my subjects are. I think they need to be just rotated a little bit to the right. So not a whole lot, but a little bit. We're gonna hit Control or Command T and I'm just gonna rotate them a little bit to the right. There we go. Now you can change this rotation at any time. So if you're like, ooh, I rotated too much, not a big deal. You can change that at any time. So let's hit that checkbox up there and bring our subjects right into the middle of the frame. Good deal. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and zoom in and I wanna make a selection right here around my subjects, okay? So going right here around the edge of my subjects. And once I have that selection, I can just load that into my layer mask. So my favorite tool for doing this is called the pen tool. And the pen tool allows you to create paths, which you can then turn those paths into a selection. So anytime you have like a complicated edge like this that you want to like trace pretty reliably, that's a great time to bring in the pen tool. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. Now I'm going to start kind of like outside here and go right around this edge down and around again. Now, you could most definitely use this tool to trace around your entire subjects, but we're not going to because we don't need to and it would just take a lot of time. So let's just start right up here. I'm gonna kind of click and drag and I wanna set up a line that kind of like goes smooth right there into my subject. So we're, I'm not clicking right here on my subject to start. We're just kind of starting out there and then smoothing right in. Now, if you are using the pen tool, uh, there we go, let's go ahead and bring that in. A couple of little pointers here. I like to go to this gear icon and I like to click on rubber band. Rubber band just gives me, see that I have this little preview of where my next curve is gonna be? That's because I have rubber band. If I turn that off, I don't get the little preview. I find the tools harder to use. So we're gonna turn rubber band on. I get a little preview of what I'm gonna be doing. So that's nice. The other thing with the pen tool is up here at the top, you wanna to make sure it says path. You have the option to make a shape or a path. We're just gonna use a path. That's all we need to make our selection. Okay, so now that we have our pen tool, it's all about clicking and dragging. So we're gonna click here and kind of drag in the direction of our curves. Now, the reason I like the pen tool is because you can change any of these curves at any point in time. Super easy to do. So for instance, I clicked and dragged this. I wanna pull it in a little bit. So I'm gonna hold Control or Command. We're gonna click on this little icon, boop, and bring it back in to where it more accurately fits the edge of my subject. Now, I also, you can see, I'm trying to bring this over here, but it's like, it's trying to pull in this way and then, you know, go back out there. I want an angle here, okay? I want it to go boom in and then angle back out. So what we're gonna do is hold Alt or Option, and I'm gonna grab this point here and pull it right up there, and then check that out. Now we're angling in the right direction. And if this isn't the right place, hold Control or Command and move that. So really, when using the pen tool, you kinda of just need to know two like keyboard keys. Control or Command will help you move an object, and anytime you wanna make an angle, you hold Alt or Option and click on an area. There we go. Now I'm nice and zoomed in. You can also see I'm also like 
selecting a little bit inside of the edge of my subject. Okay, there we go. And that helps the cutout to be a little bit more realistic. There we go. So right now this isn't, this isn't technically cutting my, my subject out. We're just tracing my subject. And then once I have my subject pretty well traced, then we can turn this tracing into a selection. And then I can use my selection to cut out my subject. Sounds like a bunch of steps, but it's really not that bad. Now you can see I'm just including this grass, right? We had some grass from a plant there. I'm just including that in the in the selection here. I'm, I'm okay with it being in the selection because I'll just uh, mask that out. There we go. And then we're gonna go all the way down. So you can see we have here, they're back on white again, okay? So mostly this tricky area is where they're not on white, right? So they're on white up here. I'm gonna trace around down here until they're on white again, and then I'm just gonna loop that around. Some ways you can get around doing this, um, you can use a bigger piece of white paper, you can use two pieces of white paper taped together, uh, a lot of, lot of little tricks, but sometimes you just got what you got and you gotta make it work, and uh, that is where Photoshop really shines in my opinion, is like, you know what, we just had this thing, we had a time constraint or a budget constraint, and uh, we just got to make it work and Photoshop is your tool for making it work. Okay. So what I did now was I just kind of used the pen tool to go right around this edge here, starting from when they were on white over here and then ending from when they're on white. And then I'm just going to click and drag and go right back to my original point. So bonk, click on my original point. So I got a little loop here with my pen pads and you can see how well we actually are uh, following my subject. Okay, that's a pen path. So now that we have our pen path, we're gonna click here in our path dialog. If you don't see that, go to window and down to paths. Just make sure that's got a little check box next to it. And then here in our path, I wanna give it a name, okay? So we're gonna call this subjects. We wanna give it a name and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click here on our pen path. Okay, so make sure you're in the path dialog again. Right click and I'm gonna to go to make selection. There we go. And you can feather your radius. This is just, I do recommend having a feathered radius. The reason is if the edge is too hard, it's not gonna look like a photograph because sometimes edges are like a little bit lower resolution, a little bit of like, blur, whatever, whatever. So I recommend putting in a little feathered radius and we're just gonna put uh, 0.5 pixels in there. So we'll hit okay. Good deal. So now what was just a pen path is now a selection. Pretty cool. So with that selection, I can go back into my layers dialog and now I can paint black on my layer mask and it's gonna hide that area. So let's hit B for the brush tool. All right, I'm gonna paint black on my layer mask and because I have a selection active, it only lets me paint where I have a selection active. There we go. And you can see that was very easy. All the hard work is done with the pen path. Once you have the pen path, it's super easy. So let's just undo that. I'll just do it again so you can see what we're doing. So here's my pen path, okay? P for the pen tool, you just go in your path dialog, or you can even click here in your path. So you can just cl right click in your path and go to make selection, feather that by 0.5 pixels, okay? On my layer mask, I'm gonna paint with black because remember black uh, hides whatever's on your layer, white will show whatever's on your layer. So we're just gonna paint with black right over top of here. There we go, it's gonna hide that area and then we're done, we just deselect by hitting Control or Command D for deselect. And then let's just zoom in here. See that edge is like perfect, right? It's such a nice edge. It just looks like this, you know, continues right along through there. No better way to get an edge like that in my opinion. Can't do it with the brush tool, uh, the magnetic lasso tool, the lasso tool is not gonna do that good of a job the pen tool really is the way to go. I'm a big, big fan of that. 
Uh, Mike, how are we doing on our, our time and giveaways and all that fun stuff? We're good. It's about 10 to noon. Um, we're ready for a giveaway, though, once, uh, once you're ready. I'm ready right now. We're at a little bit of a stopping point. Uh, right. We're going to get our subjects here completely on uh, white background, but I'm ready for another giveaway. Ooh, giveaway. Let's see. What's what fun stuff do I have in front of me that I could give? I could give uh, my my water. I could give this away. Would anyone want to w win water that I partially drank? <laughs> I we'll see. Would you want that, Mike? Would you if I gave this away to you? Like if you were watching the stream and I gave I gave away a, my water. Well, you got to get into the chat. You got to enter to win here. I mean, I, if I just give it to you right now, it's hardly fair for everyone else. Entries are coming in. No, that's that's not what we're giving away. What we're giving away is a year of Flurn Pro subscription, and with that, you get access to every single tutorial that we've ever recorded and what we were just doing here uh, was, was some work with the pen tool and pen paths and we have a fantastic pro tutorial on how to master the pen tool in photoshop showing you how to cut out anything from the background we show you super super in depth and what i like about this live broadcast is we get to interact super fun what's a little bit tough about this live broadcast is like um on a regular like Flurm Pro in our recordings, you can just go back like 15, 20 seconds. So like if you miss anything, you can just like, hold up, what did he say? Go back. This live broadcast, I don't know, actually, can they go back on this live broadcast? Um, I think they can. Like a four hour. I think it's like a four hour. Oh, okay. Well, then you can. So uh, that's even better. Fantastic. Well, during our for our regular broadcasts on Flurm Pro, uh, you can also go back and watch them over and over again if you need to. So what we're going to give away is a year subscription of Flurm Pro. That's every single Pro tutorial we have ever released. Plus, you get all kinds of Photoshop actions, Lightroom presets, all kinds of really really cool stuff uh, that are just going to help you make your images better. So who doesn't want that? Plus, you're going to get some swag. You're going to get some stickies some little stickers here i'm gonna here i'll put one of these flurn stickers on me right now so you see there's it's sticker technology everyone it will literally just stick to whatever you stick it to we have a winner we have a winner robin robin, robin is the winner robin uh congratulations robin you are the winner um you just Fix my little microphone here. I'm sorry if it sounds weird. Uh, Robin, co congratulations. You are the winner. You just won a year of Flurn Pro subscription. Also, all these stickers and prizes, buttons, all kinds of really, really fun stuff. So, uh, connect with Mike in the chat. And he's going to tell you what to do to claim your prize. Congratulations, Robin. Now, we have a three more of these to give away, don't we, yep. during this broadcast? Yep, and a special prize later on. Oh, we do have a special prize later on. What, what's our special prize? The Waka. Oh, we are giving away. By the way, if you see me using one of these and you're like, hey, that looks neat. I want one of those. Uh, this is called a uh, Wacom pressure sensitive tablet. If you guys are watching Flurn for a while, you'll know I use these in every single tutorial. They're incredibly helpful. They allow me to work more accurately in Photoshop. And we're gonna be giving one of the, these away towards the end of today's broadcast. Uh, also, I do wanna mention that uh, this is not our only broadcast today. We have another broadcast that's gonna be from four to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. So you could win, uh, you could, we're giving away a Wacom tablet then, and we're gonna give away five more Flurn Pro subscriptions with prize packs. So if, uh, if you guys don't win this time, be sure to log in then. Robin said that we made their Friday spelled with a PH. Oh, yeah. Robin. I'm just loving these PH puns, by the way. Just keep them coming. Anything you can put a PH on, yes, please. We, around the office, we, we get a lot of pleasure with a PH. Pleasure. Yeah. yeah, maybe I shouldn't say that actually. Uh, we get a lot of joy in seeing those uh, pH puns. We really enjoy those. Well, let's. Your, your uh, best is stealing the show, by the way. Oh, yes. The best is the star. 
I wore this vest, I think, for like four free tutorials in a row just blew up. last year. I think people got pretty sick of this vest by the end of it. <laughs> we might need to give it away. <laughs> we might need to give it away. Ooh. <laughs> it's unwashed. Yeah. Yeah. Never washed. Perfect. Uh, okay. Hey, let's get back into Photoshop. What do you say? Uh, so what we've done so far, just a little recap for those, uh, maybe we've got some people just joining us here. Uh, we've got our subjects here. I'm going to hold shift and click on our layer mask. So we've got our subjects that were photographed on this white paper and they did a great job photographing on this white paper because that really helps for this cutout to happen. Now, the majority of our subjects are just on pure white. So you can see right here, just on white right here, but this little area, our subject kind of like peered off the white background and we got some like little grass and things like that. So the first thing that I did is just put a layer mask on this layer and just painted with my brush tool, I painted black to hide this area around here. And I didn't really have to paint, like I didn't have to do a good job painting, okay? But when it came to this little area here, I just wanted to be, do a little bit better of a job. So I used the pen tool to make a path right around here. Then I turned that into a selection and then I painted black on the layer mask and that just hides that area. So let's go ahead and bring this up to our current. You can see already we're looking good. Now, if I click my background layer visible, you can see that's pure white. Okay, so my subjects look pretty good, right? Definitely looked like more cut out than they did when we started, but they're still not on pure white. So what we're gonna do is actually the reverse idea of what we did in our last little section. We're gonna make this light gray into pure white. All right, so let's show you how to do it. The first thing I want to do is grab a levels adjustment layer, okay? And I'm going to take my white point and we're going to make it darker. So I'm going to take my white point, let's just bring it right up here. Actually, I'm going to take my black point because it's just going to enhance and further show me what is not white, okay? So we're going to take our black point and I'm just going to make that a little bit darker. Okay, now let's just double click here and I'm going to call this check. I'm gonna right click on the little eyeball and give it a red color. So why am I doing this? Well, the reason I do this is so I can really get an idea of what is pure white on my image. Okay, so what this does is it takes anything that's darker than this point and just like turns it black, right? So anything that's not pure white is gonna get darker and darker and eventually just become black. See, if I go all the way here, Basically, my entire image turns black. So what's very obvious to me now is that this area is not pure white, but you can see the areas that are pure white remain pure white. So to start off with, look, you can actually see the edge of my document, which we definitely don't want that, right? So let's go ahead and make uh, some selections. I'm gonna use my uh, lasso tool. Okay, we're just gonna lasso tool right around here, make a selection there and I'm gonna fill this with white. So let's hit shift delete, keyboard shortcut for the fill dialog, and we'll, our contents are gonna be white. Oh, you know what, black, our contents are gonna be black because I wanna hide it. So let's fill that with black and that hides that. There we go, good deal. Fill that with black and we fill this with black too. There we go. So I might not have seen that edge that was there. In fact, I didn't, you know, without this check layer here, I didn't even know that the edge of the photograph itself was actually visible. But once you turn this check layer on, it becomes immediately obvious. So these check layers are very helpful and it's not going to be on here forever. When we're done with it, we just turn it back off and we're good to go. So let's go ahead and alter it a little bit. I don't need my black point to be so dark, but I do need to know what is not pure white in my image, right? I need to know that. Okay, so let's make that layer invisible temporarily. Now what I need is a tool for getting this light gray to white. I need to get it to white, right? Because it's not white yet. So we're gonna use another levels adjustment layer to get it there. So let's grab our adjustment layer. We're gonna go to levels, okay? And now this time I'm gonna take my white point and drag this from the right to the left. And what this does is it takes anything that's lighter 
right? Like anything that's here and it makes it pure white. There we go. Now this doesn't actually look that horrible on my subjects themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and like add a little bit of it right here. Just like, we're just going to leave that on my subjects. Okay. We're going to right click and I'm going to go to create a clipping mask because I want this to only affect my subjects. Now let's turn our check layer back on here. So this little che check layer, okay. This is going to show me what is still not completely white. And I can turn this off and on here to see that levels adjustment layer really did help out. Okay, let's just bring this up even more. There we go. So my goal here is I got to get this area completely white right over here. The shadows right under my subject's feet. I don't have to get those completely white because we actually want some shadows. It makes it look more realistic, but all this stuff I got to get completely white. Okay, so we've done one of these layers. Boop. Okay, that helped out a decent bit. I'm going to have that visible over top of my entire subjects, but I want another one of these layers. So we're going to grab a levels adjustment layer again. Okay. We'll clip this by right clicking and go to create clipping mask. And this time I'm going to take my white point and even go even farther with it. Okay. And let's turn this check layer back on. So now we can see, okay, what is actually visible? And I'm going to bring this all the way up to right about there. Okay. So now with this check layer, but this actually looks kind of cool. Uh, if you were li if this was uh, 30 years ago, man, that would be an album cover done. Uh, <laughs> time warp. Uh, okay. So what I'm looking at here is I've taken this other level adjustment layer and I've taken the white point and just made more of my image completely white. Now, my check layer is on. Okay. And my check layer is making everything darker. And what that's doing is again, it's showing me what's not completely white in my image. So now with my check layer on the background around my subject looks completely white. So I can turn this check layer back off and I can be a hundred percent sure that the background around my subject is completely white. Now, the only problem here, let's just turn this layer off and on is that now my subjects look horrible. So what do I have to do? Well, I have to use a layer mask to make this levels adjustment layer only visible on the background. I just don't want this to be visible on my subject. So that's actually not that difficult to do. So we're just going to click on our layer mask for this levels adjustment layer. And I'm going to invert it by hitting control or command I for invert. Now we're going to use our brush tool to simply paint white over the areas that we want it to be visible. And it helps to have this check layer be visible while we do this. Okay. So let's just zoom in here. So you can see as I paint white on the layer mask of the levels adjustment layer, it's turning this background completely white. My background is becoming completely white anywhere I paint this visible. But this is not masking, okay? Well, it's masking the levels adjustment layer, but I, notice how I'm not cutting my subjects out here. I'm simply making the background right around them just brighter, okay? And by doing this, it's gonna put them completely on white, but I don't necessarily have to create a perfect layer mask. Now you could always make a perfect layer mask if you wanted to. You could trace around your entire subjects with a pen tool and there's nothing wrong with that. This is just a way to do something extremely similar and it's going to take a fraction of the time. So that sounds nice, right? Yes, please. There we go. And we just paint it white right around there. And again, I'm going to leave a little bit of this shadow here underneath because you want a little bit of shadow underneath your subjects that just helps it look more realistic. There we go. Don't need too much of it. See, this works here inside this little area. All right. So this is working really well. It's basically taking these areas that are not pure white and it's making them pure white. 
and my little check layer is just there to show me hey is this actually pure white or does it just look white because there's a difference and it, you know if it just looks white you know you might get away with that on your screen but sometimes if you go to print it it's not going to look white you'll see all those artifacts or if you look on it on a different screen or on the internet it might not look pure white too so you know keep that in mind that you know your screen might not be the only way that people are going to wind up seeing these images and you want to just check if you want something to be pure white use one of these check layers and make sure it's pure white if you want something to look pure black use one of these check layers and make sure it's pure black there we go okay so that looks pretty good now so we're going to turn this check layer back off and we can see what this did is it turned our background pure white now a couple areas I accidentally painted like over my subject's hand right here okay so I just want to make sure I paint black on my layer mask over top of my subject's hand or it's just going to lighten it up too much so you want to kind of turn these layers off and on get an idea of uh, if you accidentally painted some areas too light or too dark you know great paint black on the layer mask right there so pay special attention to people's faces obviously right you want to make sure that their faces are uh, you know, not over or underexposed. All right, and notice I got a little shadow area here right under the, right under foot, okay? You could get rid of those if you want, but oftentimes they help make a, make an image, uh, you know, they make a little more believable, like, you know, a little bit of shadow under a, under, under a person is, they should have a shadow under them, right? That, that makes sense. All right, so oftentimes I'll just like, with a really low flow, kind of like bring in a little bit of their shadow, just like right around their foot or wherever they're touching the ground. And that's just gonna help that look more realistic. See how it grounds them? If it's just completely white, as soon as they touch the ground, they're just gonna look like they're floating in space. You gotta have them grounded, like they're actually on that, on that background there. Okay, so I'll just bring a little bit more of that shadow in there, just a tiny bit. So now our check layer looks like this, okay? Now, remember, I brought back some of this shadow and we did that on purpose. So when I turn this check layer back on, it's completely white all around our subjects. Looking good, right? And we have a little bit of shadow there. It's not crazy, like if I turn that layer back off, it's not, we, did, we don't have a super dark shadow, but we have something there and that's what helps crowns our subject. I think we're looking great. Now, at this point, what can I be sure of? I can be sure that this background is completely white. How do I know that? Well, let's just start off by making my solid color fill layer invisible, okay? So literally the only area that's even visible from the original photograph is what you see now. Everything else is being filled in by a solid color fill layer. And what we've done with these levels adjustment layers is we've taken that light gray and we've done one one round where we just lighten it up okay enough to where the image still looks good and our subject's skin tone still looks natural and then we've taken another area where we lightened up even more and that we just had visible on the background so we have this check layer let's just go double click on this check layer just to make sure we're going to take our black points and just drag that all the way up okay okay because right here let's just take this check layer back to normal so here's the check layer without any adjustments. This is just a regular levels adjustment layer, by the way. We're just using it to check, hey, what is completely, completely white? And anything that's not completely white, I wanna be able to see that. So you do that by taking your black point and just dragging it from the left, and I'm gonna go all the way to my right. Okay, and you can see when I went all the way, all the way, all the way to my right, I still have a couple of these areas that I can still see, right? 
So we just need to go back in here to this levels adjustment layer that I, there we go, that I made to make my white point even brighter. And I just need to paint white on these little areas. You could also use your layer mask. The reason I'm using my levels adjustment layer in this case is because it's making my whites, my light areas brighter while not really affecting my darks. Okay. So if you happen to be editing an area that's like right around your subjects, you just want to use the levels adjustment layer. If you're editing an area that's just like right out here in the middle of the open, you could just use a layer mask. There we go. So now I want to enhance this even more. Let's just do another levels check layer just because I want to be 1000 billion gajillion percent sure that the only areas that are not pure white is what I want. Okay, so right here I can see if I zoom in, I use this second check layer to like really, really go. Okay, and this time I'm going to use my layer mask to clean this up. Now these, what looks kind of dark here, keep in mind I have two very, very powerful levels adjustment layers that are really, really pushing those colors. So what looks kind of dark in this background actually might be like 5% gray in reality. Okay, these are, this is not actually dark, but check it out, all this stuff that I wouldn't have seen with my eyes. Okay, but this is just evidence that this stuff was not pure, pure, pure white. And now we're making it pure white and I can be like so, so confident. So if I got a client, you know, they're, they're paying me to retouch their images and they're going to put these on e-commerce or whatever. And they're like, Hey, we need the background to be pure white. You know, you don't want to deliver the image to them. And then they upload it to their website and be like, Oh, what are all these spots in here? You know, you don't want to, you don't want that. You want to maintain your reputation, you want them to come and hire you again, whatever it is, right? So you want to be sure that when when you give them that image, it is pure, pure white or pure black or pure green or what, whatever it is. But this is a great way to check that out. And I feel super confident now. Look, we've got these two levels adjustment layers that are just taken. Oh, I use my layer mask there instead of my levels adjustment layer. Oops, let me just undo that a couple times. See, that's when I use my layer mask there. That's why undos are very helpful in Photoshop. All right, let's just hit a couple more undos here. Okay, I should have been doing that on my levels adjustment layer instead of my layer mask. The layer mask just makes it completely invisible. See, like if I just paint black on it, it's gonna do that. What this levels adjustment layer is gonna do is just gonna make it lighter, okay? And when it's on almost white, there we go. Good deal. So I wanted to paint this on my levels adjustment layer, not my layer mask. They look kind of the same when you're in this view, but when you're off of this view, they are going to look different. All right. Good deal. So again, my goal making that background just 100% white in all of these little areas. Good deal. And we're almost done with this. Now you can most definitely just cut out your subjects like completely using uh, like the pen tool like what we showed you guys earlier. Uh, and that would be a fantastic way to do this too. There we go. But this definitely a good way. So let's just go ahead and turn these levels adjustment layers back on. Okay. There we go. Went a little, little aggressive with this level. So we're just going to bring it back up and then I'm going to bring my dark point back up there. Good deal. And then I'm just going to paint black on my layer mask over top of the clothing. Anywhere where it actually painted over the clothes. Hey. Question from the, the peanut galleries, I guess it would be called. Oh, nice. A question. Yeah, bring it on. Why did you just cut uh, the subjects out and then place them on white? Oh, okay. That's a great question. So that would also be a very good way to do this. You could most definitely just cut the subjects completely out and then put them on white. 
Um, two reasons why I didn't do that. One is I wanted to maintain a decent bit of the shadow detail here underneath my subjects. Okay, so I wanted to make sure that the shadows from the original photographs are actually still in here. That's, that's one of the reasons. And the second reason is this technique just saves a little bit of time. Now I know I went back and I made a mistake, so I had to go undo my mistake, so that's why it took a little bit more time than it should have. Uh, but this technique is just a little bit faster because the, what I did earlier with the pen tool, remember I went and cut out just this area here uh, from our subject's leg. You know, that took maybe five to 10 minutes just for this little area. So 100%, you could definitely cut out your subjects uh, and put them on a white background. If you use the pen tool, this might take 30 minutes or so. Uh, so I just did this to save a little bit of time. You could most definitely also do something similar with like the magic wand tool and select and mask and things like that. And that would totally work also. Uh, so just trying to show you guys a few different ways to do these things. But if you feel comfortable select like cutting out the subjects, like actually cutting out their edges, then that also would be a great way to do this. That's a great question. Good deal. Great question. Uh, so the last thing I want to do here is I want to just basically fill in these areas. Okay, there we go. Let me just paint black on my layer mask right over here. I want to fill in these areas where uh, you can see just a little bit of uh, grass over top of my subject. So I'm going to make a new layer. Now we're going to clip this to my subject and I'm going to just hit S for the clone stamp tool and we're going to clone stamp from one area to another one. Thankfully, in this case, my subject is just wearing dark colored clothing. So it's pretty easy here. There we go. To just layer mask, or sorry, to clone stamp this in. Just clone stamping from, you know, one black area to another black area. Right here over top of my subject's clothing. Good question. The selection tools in Photoshop really have gotten pretty good. Now that I'm thinking select and mask might have been a good way to go with this one too. There we go. So I'm just clone stamping away all of the little grass that we had in this image. All right, now I'm going to pop into my brush tool. And that's another fun thing about doing this live is that, you know, there are always more than one way to do things in Photoshop. There we go. So sometimes I'll have an approach and you might think, oh, you could probably do it this way. And you know what? You're totally right. There's a bunch of ways you can do just about everything in Photoshop. So, you know, techniques that I use nowadays I probably would have used something totally different just a few years ago. And some of the stuff that I'm using now, I'll probably do different in a few years from now also. So uh, yeah, that's just a good, good question and a good reminder that, you know, just because you're doing something maybe a little bit different from what I'm doing, doesn't mean that you're necessarily uh, like we're, you know, it's not like a right or wrong situation. It's usually just uh, this technique versus that technique. Good question. So we have our subjects now on a pure white background. And one other thing, by the way, that I like to do when I have my subjects uh, in a situation like this is my the background of my Photoshop here is actually gray right now, but I want this to be pure white too. So I'm gonna right click outside of it. I'm gonna go down to select custom color and I'm gonna go all the way to white and now my subjects are just on pure white background as far as you can see. See, I zoom out and look, there they are. Hey, I know you, come closer. Oh, okay, good, now you're closer. Uh, now they're just on a pure white background. So um, let's just take our crop tool. There we go. I'm gonna just crop tool that open and I'm gonna just put a little bit of text there we go. We'll just make that text. I'll go to my character panel here. We'll just make that text black. 
there we are. And let's just bring this text down, something like this. So just a little uh, little filler here. You know, you can use this this sort of thing like on a website, right? Because if if you got a border uh, of your website, there we go. Let's make that nice and small, and let's left align that. Cool, and I'm just gonna hold Control or Command, click on the two of those. We're gonna use our Move tool and align them both to the left there. There we go. So if you were, you know, you wanted to make like a little pamphlet or, or something like that, um, you can kind of put this in here and you can do all kinds of fun stuff with it. Like if you wanted to, uh, let's just say you wanted to do a, uh, there we go, like a mask. I would actually just space the characters out, but in this case, I'm just gonna use a mask. You know, you could have it be like right around your subject or something like that. Um, I wouldn't necessarily do this because it actually doesn't look that good. But <laughs> because your subjects are on pure white, like, you know, I, I would be happy, you know, like saying, okay, here's an image that would be great for like a website where you could do like about us, you know, and then you could like tell your little story. Um, Obviously, you wouldn't want this text to actually be part of the image. You would want it to be, you know, HTML because then Google will know to index it. But because our subjects are here on a pure white background, it means they're going to fit super well into websites, into newsletters, any type of promotional material. It's just a, a nice classic way to go whenever you're trying to display anything uh, on, on print or on the web. It uh, really opens your possibilities up for tons of different displays. Okay, well good, let's go ahead and take that text away and we are good to save. So I'm gonna hit Shift Command S and I'm just gonna put that right here on my desktop and we are good to go. Okay, fantastic, I'm so excited. Uh, Take away time? Yeah, let's do it. I kinda have to use the bathroom uh, which I'm doing my best to hold it, but I'd, I don't think it's going to be a good idea to hold this any, you, you do what you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> any longer. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe we can put something on screen or, or something like that. Or some, something else can come and hang out with you guys right here. Cool. If you want to do a, just a quick giveaway announcement. Yes. We'll get the giveaway going, and we'll just have the winner ready for you when we get back. Oh, that's great. That's a great idea. Fantastic. Giveaway time. It's giveaway time. So we are giving away a year of Flurn Pro subscription. You will have access to literally every single Pro tutorial we've ever done. Compositing, retouching, special effects, standard image editing. We have a great intro to Photoshop tutorial we just released called the Beginner's Guide to Photoshop, where we showed you how to commonly use tools, how to set the program up, we even go into more advanced examples like simple, like compositing. We showed you how to replace a sky, double exposure, all kinds of cool stuff. And we released that yesterday. It's a fantastic tutorial. Uh, so you're going to be getting every tutorial we've ever released as well as some swag. We've got pins, we've got some stickers, we've got all kinds of fun things that we're going to be sending along to you as well. So uh, just follow the instructions in the chat. I'm going to take a Chet said, just go, man. Just go, yeah. Just go, man. You guys are too kind. Thank you very much. They said, leave the vest. Leave the vest. I, I will. You know what? I don't need the vest to go to the bathroom, so here we go. This is entertainment right here. This is, this is live. <laughs> it's live. <laughs> I'll be right back.
never been so live. We have a winner coming in right now. We got a winner coming in. Fantastic. Congratulations. Uh, who's the winner? Hi, everyone. <laughs> Never has a bathroom break, break been more publicized. We have two winners from this one. We have two winners? Elena. Elena. And another one. And another one. It's okay. Rodrigo. Rodrigo. Those are our winners. Olena and Rodrigo, congratulations. Thank you so much for joining us for this live broadcast. Super fun to have you here. You both just won a year of Flurn Pro subscription as well as a fun swag pack. All you have to do is coordinate with us in the chat and we'll get you your prizes. All right, well, I am ready to do some Photoshop. I wanna thank everyone for allowing me to take that bathroom break. I feel uh, not like I'm going to explode now. So, hey, that's a good one. Let's jump back into Lightroom. What do you say? So we finished up a couple of images already, and I think we're looking really, really good. Alrighty. So our next image here, uh, basically our subject is a little bit underexposed, and this is something that happens to us all the time. It's a limitation of our cameras. Let's be honest here. Uh, your camera is exposing for the window outside. You got your subject in front of the window. They're going to be a little bit dark. That's just something that happens all the time. Now, there are some things that we can do here. My advice in general is I don't want to push this too far. Like I don't want to make my subject too bright because it's going to start to look a little bit unnatural. Like even in real life, if you're just like looking at a person and they're in standing in front of a bright window, they're going to seem a little bit dark in comparison. So we want to keep that, but obviously we want to still get some of this bright information here on our subject. Okay, so there are some fantastic tools that we can use here in Lightroom. Uh, and thank you for sending over, this is a raw image, so that's fantastic. We have a little bit more room for editing when we're working with our raw images. So let's pop into our develop module here. Okay, here we have got the before and after setup. And the first thing that I'm going to take a look at are my shadow levels. So we're going to take our shadows and just bring those from the left to the right. Okay. And we can see this is starting to look pretty decent. Now, as we go a little bit too far, we're starting to see a couple things. And I, I want to just kind of highlight a couple things. Like, I don't know if you can see a little bit of a, like a line or a bar there in my subject. Okay. That's basically like lens flare, uh, what's going on there. Like that's something light is entering the curtain, entering the camera from these curtains we're probably seeing an artifact of that. So um, we definitely want to make sure not to include that. And we wouldn't want my subject to be this bright anyway. Um, there we go. Something like that I think is actually just a little bit more appropriate. And anytime you have shadow information and you make it a little bit brighter, you always want to adjust your colors as well. Because by default, shadows will be less saturated than midtones. Okay, so if you're taking shadows and making them brighter, pushing your shadows into the midtone layer, then you want to make sure to add more saturation as well so they'll look a little bit more natural. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we've made our shadows a little bit brighter. Okay, the same token. Now I always use the vibrance slider whenever I'm editing an image with people in it. So we're going to use our vibrance slider and just bring that vibrance a little bit further up. Okay. That looks really good. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do is just warm this image up a little bit more. So we're gonna take our temperature slider and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of warmth. It's like sunlight and, you know, we have our subject in here. Uh, I oftentimes will add like a tiny bit of warmth to the images. I just kind of like how it looks. I, I, it's, a, it's a personal preference. Okay, well, at this point, this looks pretty good. So we got a nice before and after here and I've got a couple of things that I want to do. One, I want to take care of this line here that's going on, okay? Uh, and two, I want to add a little bit more light into just the highlights of my subject. So to do this, what we're going to do is go into Photoshop. So let's go ahead and right click on our image. We're going to go to edit in and I'm going to say open as a smart object in Photoshop. All right, 
there we go. And let's hit F for full screen. So you can see the changes that we made are visible. Now again, the reason I use a smart object here is because if I double click right here on the thumbnail, check this out. I have all of my adjustments here in Adobe Camera Raw that I had in Lightroom. So if I decide, you know what, I made my shadows a little bit too bright or too dark, I can adjust them here and that's making adjustments to my raw image. So it's a fantastic workflow. I really, really suggest doing this. Now in this case, I'm gonna bring my exposure up just a little bit. You can see the higher I bring my exposure, this is gonna make everything my image brighter, including my background. So if I do this, I'm gonna see if I can take my highlights and just bring them down a little bit, okay? Because I don't wanna start like making you know, the background like too bright. I don't want to start losing information, but there we are. I think that's looking pretty nice. Maybe I'll bring my shadow levels up a tiny bit. Good deal. So let's hit okay. Now, again, what we want to do here is I want to take care of this line because that's just like a lens flare type of thing. And I want to enhance some of the highlights on my subject as well. I'm totally okay if you know, this area here on my subject's dark. There's not a ton of information there anyway, but these highlight areas, we do want to enhance and brighten those up a little bit. So let's go ahead and take care of this uh, interesting little line that we have here on our subject's back. And again, this is, this is not on the subject. This is just part of what happened when we took the picture. Okay. Now, first thing I want to do, kind of what we did in our last couple images is we use some tools to enhance the areas we wanted to actually correct. I want to do that here as well. I want to enhance it a little bit more so I can see, did I really get rid of it, you know? So let's just grab a uh, level, sorry, I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer. There we go. And we're going to add more contrast. So I'm going to make my brights a little bit brighter and we're going to make our darks a little bit darker. There we go. Just kind of like add a little bit of contrast. And this is going to help me see, you can see that the line we were talking about here, you can just see it a little bit more clearly, right? And uh, what we're gonna use for this uh, technique is actually just the brush tool. Uh, and I'm actually gonna use, well, why not? I'm, I'm thinking about using frequency separation because uh, that would be what I would personally use. Is that too advanced for what, for what we're doing on this broadcast, frequency separation? I don't know, let's ask people in the chat. Do you want me to use frequency separation retouching to get rid of this? Because that's actually what I would use. Or do you want me to use a more simple technique? You're on a bit of a delay. I'm on a bit of a delay, no problem. This is why we do this live, so I can ask you guys. And by the way, if we do a frequency separation adjustment layer, uh, we can include this frequency separation in this live broadcast so you guys can actually download the action that I that I use here. So that'll be interesting too. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. <laughs> Just, Just do it. Do it. Okay. Good deal. Um, you have uh, about 800 uh, viewers right now too. Oh, that's fantastic. And they all want you to do it. They all want Everybody. me to do it. Okay. Good deal. Um, Mike, are you able to hook this up on the tutorial page as the pH asset? Yeah, so let me go ahead and just, uh, before I do this, I wanna give you guys this action too. So I'm gonna go to window. This is just like a little treat that everyone can get for joining this broadcast here. All right, we're just gonna go ahead. I have a frequency separation action that I feel is fantastic. And we're, I'm just gonna pop this on my desktop here. There we go. And it's, just, it's gonna take just a second because uh, Mike's gotta do it, but we're gonna be able to put this uh, on learn.com slash live. Can you put it on one of the drives? Is that okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can definitely, I'll just put it on one of the drives. How's that? Cool, I'm gonna have Jack set us up. Thanks, Jack. All right. All right, cool. And I've just got it in the Robin main directory. All right, good deal. So uh, it's gonna take about five minutes for us to get this you know, available on flurn.com slash live. But in the meantime, I'll just go ahead and do it. So you guys get an idea of what frequency separation is all about. Okay. So the whole idea behind frequency separation 
is the your images are kind of made of separate frequencies. You have your high frequencies, which are like your small details. So think about like skin pores and skin textures. That's like high frequency. Then you have your low frequency, which would be like the colors of your skin and like the light levels of your skin. So like if you were to blur all the skin texture, that would be like low frequency. And then just the skin texture itself is high frequency. So when we work on high frequency or frequency separation, we, we separate those two out. So it allows us just to work on the small details or the large details. Okay, so you get to do your frequency separation through an action that we're gonna give you guys, just a second. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and load this action here. Okay, so I'm gonna open up my Flurn frequency separation. We have an 8-bit and a 16-bit, so if you're using a JPEG or a raw image, that both will work. First thing you wanna do is you wanna go to image and down to mode and just check what mode you're in. Because right now I'm in a 16-bit mode so I wanna make sure I do the frequency separation that's in 16 bits. So image, mode, and then just check. You know, whatever has this little checkbox, that's the frequency separation you wanna run. Okay, so I'm gonna make that, uh, that curves adjustment layer invisible. We're gonna click on this Flurn frequency separation 16 bit, and I'm just gonna hit this play button here. Okay, and we have little prompts on the screen, which is super nice. So uh, this one asks us, uh, there we go, time to blur skin texture. Uh, so we're going to hit continue there. There we go. And this basically just gives us a, like an idea of what our low frequency is going to look like. Okay. So you want to get your low frequency. You want to use a blur to where you can't see skin texture anymore. Like here you can see I can still see skin texture, skin details. So I'm just going to add a little bit of a blur here. There we go. And five pixels actually looks great here. So let's hit OK. And then that's literally everything you have to do uh, to get the action going. Uh, then you give a little bit of instructions here. So I'll, you can follow those instructions. I'll just kind of explain it because we're in a video form. So that's even better, I feel. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up our Flurn frequency separation. And again, remember earlier we talked about images being made up of multiple frequencies. You have your high frequencies, which are like the small textures and details. Then you have your low frequencies, which are basically like the colors and contours of your image. So what we can do here, let's just zoom into our subject's face so we can kind of get an idea here, is I have my high frequency, which I can turn off and on. And when I turn this off and on, you can see a lot of areas like, you know, we have just a couple little spots right here, they disappear, okay? Because this is just the higher frequencies of my image. Okay, including all this like noise and all this other stuff that could just kind of come along with the photograph. There we go. Now our low frequencies, okay, our low frequencies, this is basically just the color and tone of my image. So what we have here, let's just take a look at this area that I want to remove. This high frequency, okay, all this is is the, in this case, it's like the the grain from my image, all these little textures and things like that, that's what this high frequency is. Now I turn that off and we can still see this little band of light here is still visible. So that's a low frequency issue. So high frequency, this is where all these little, uh, the grain from the original image, all these little skin textures, that's all in high frequency. If I turn the high frequency off, we still see it. That tells us we have a low frequency issue here. Okay, so now we have the option to edit either just the high frequency or the low frequency. So this is a low frequency issue. So we wanna work on this underneath our high frequency layer, okay? We wanna work on this in a low frequency way, basically. So how do we do that? Well, the easiest thing to do is just to create a new layer in between the high frequency and low frequency. Just make a new layer right there. So I can still turn my high frequency on anytime, right? That's our little details. But here in the layer between them, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my brush tool. Now, check this out, this is super cool. Just to kind of show you guys how this works. I'm on my new layer, okay? I'm gonna just call this layer brush, by the way. I'm gonna hit B for the brush tool and then 
we'll just sample a color. It doesn't really matter what color we sample right now. I'm just going to paint right over top of our subject's face for now. <laughs> it's just as an example. This is not actually going to be there. Okay, so I just painted on this brush layer here, right there. I just painted with blue, right? Nothing fancy about that. But if I turn this high frequency layer on above it, check this out. Now I actually see the details of my subject right on top of that blue. Isn't that crazy? So anything that you paint in between these layers, you can paint, clone stamp, heel brush, whatever you want. Your texture and your detail is always going to be available right above it. Okay. See, I can move my brush. I can just move this around. It doesn't, doesn't really matter where it is because I've separated my image into frequencies. So I have now a high frequency and a low frequency. Okay. So obviously we're not going to just paint blue on our subject's face. That doesn't help anything. What we are going to do is paint right over this dark area. We're just going to paint right over it. So it's easy to do. We're going to hit B for the brush tool and I want to go in my little eyedropper here and I just want to make sure my sample size is a little bit on the large side because we're painting in like a large area here. So I'm going to go with an 11 by 11 average for my sample size with my brush tool. Okay, so B for the brush tool. Now what I want to do is literally I just want to paint right over top of this line here. So I want to make sure I sample areas next to that line. Okay, hold Alt or Option to sample there. There we go. And then I just want to paint right over top of the line. And I'm going to do this with a low flow. We're going to use a flow of about 10% here. So we'll sample, hold Alt or Option to sample right here. There we go. And then I'm just going to start painting right over top of my subjects, right over top of that area. Okay. And this is all low frequency stuff that I'm painting. Okay, we'll make our brush a little bit smaller because we have a little bit more detail up there. And I'm just painting right over top of that area. This is with my regular brush tool, by the way. There's nothing fancy about what I'm doing here with my painting. This is just a regular soft edge brush with a low flow. 0% fanciness going on. Brush tool all the way for the win. Okay, now let's go ahead and turn these layers off. I'm going to turn all these layers off so you can just see what I painted with my brush tool. Okay, so what I literally I just painted some skin color that I, I sampled. You know, so when you're using the brush tool, just hold Alt or Option to sample. I just painted it right over there. Okay, now we bring our subject up. Okay, we bring our low frequency up. Okay, and it just looks like blur and sample and stuff like that. But as soon as I put my skin texture back over top of it, look, it's, it's my image. It's perfect. But what I did is I painted that area away. I made it completely invisible because I was able to work underneath the texture. Okay. Underneath the actual texture of my image. So zooming in and out. Now we can see we were able to completely get rid of that by painting literally underneath the texture. So let's just show you the before and after here. We'll just turn this frequency separation off and on. Okay, looks like I've painted over our subject's dress a little bit, so not a big deal. Let's grab a layer mask. Layer mask that away. There we go. We'll just turn our frequency separation off and back on. And you see, I was able to completely just paint that away. Can't see it anymore. Okay. But if I zoom in, look at this, I got all of the detail and the texture of my image is still there. That is some cool, cool stuff. So that's kind of the beauty of frequency separation. Now, uh, this is just one example of a bunch of different cool stuff you can do with frequency separation. Uh, and we have a great pro tutorial on flurn.com called how to master frequency separation. So uh, if this looks cool to you and you're like, wow, I think I could do a lot of stuff with that. Uh, you can go a lot farther into it. Uh, complete retouch of people, environments, whatever you want. Uh, 
just a, a very, very versatile tool. And we are going to provide you with that action available on Flurn. So, Mike, how are we doing on that? We are great. The action is up and the chat is very happy. The action is online? Are you kidding me? Man, we just have the best people working here behind the scenes at Flurn. Uh, remind me what the URL for that is. Could we just do flurn.com slash live? If you just type in flurn.com slash live, does it go to where you want? Let's check it out. URLs, man. Oh, there we go. So if you want to download the frequency separation action that I just used, just go to flurn.com slash live and the download is live on the page right now. You can go there, download this and use it uh, on any one of your images. It's our gift to you for joining this live broadcast. A super special thank you uh, for joining the broadcast. Very, very fun times. Okay. so. I'm good for a giveaway. This is a great stopping point. Let's do it. Cool. All right. Let's do another one year uh, Florida Pro subscription. Let's do it. <laughs> this will be the last one we ever walk a giveaway. This is the last one? Last Florida Pro. Oh, wow. Okay. What are they going to get? Well, you guys, okay. What you're going to get is a year of Flurn Pro subscription. You're going to get one of these fancy little pins. It's just the Flurn logo with gold on it. I'm wearing one right now. Kind of wear them all the time. Uh, you get some stickers, you get some other swag, you get this really cool, ugh, you get a tote bag, totes my goats bag right here. There we go. We're testing out uh, some new designs here in Florin. These are, you know, you may recognize some, some little Photoshop tools over here. We've got some new designs coming on and uh, some good friends of mine are, are helping us design all kinds of really cool stuff. Uh, you know, physical stuff for for you guys uh, to get. So we are going to be giving away. <laughs> I about hit Mike. Sorry, bud. Uh, yeah, uh, we're going to be giving away. The person we're about to announce is going to get an entire year of Flurn Pro. That's access to literally every single tutorial we've ever recorded. Uh, it's super cool. Plus, you're going to get a bunch of the swag, what I just showed you just now. So. Super exciting stuff. I'm just trying to keep the stream interesting, throw stuff at them. It's like safe for all the viewers. It's less safe for Mike. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Less safe for Mike. yeah. Okay. You guys are 100% okay. <laughs> Nothing I can do is going to hurt you. Uh, we might, might get hit in the head with a pin. That may happen. I might also break this camera. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're getting ready to close it. Next, we're giving away cinder blocks. They said don't. <laughs> okay. The customers have spoken. We've got a winner coming up. We've got a winner coming right, 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 right up. Mike's building an army. <laughs> <laughs> Turning everyone on your side. I see how it's going. I know. We play we play a lot of games around here. I know I know how Just things are going. We start throwing our pins at you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh, winner coming up. Just give us about thirty seconds here. Aaron. We got thirty seconds to go on the winner. This live stream, by the way, is brought to you by uh, Mike Redman. For all your uh, chat. Uh, wants and needs, just turn to Mike Rabman. Uh, okay. I'm trying to turn you into commercial. If you, oh, we're going to show the name on screen for the winner. So if you see your name on the screen, congratulations. Uh, you just won a huge prize pack and uh, just coordinate with people in the chat to, uh, to claim your prize pack. Thanks for bringing. Thanks for sponsoring this uh, live broadcast, Mike. By the way. You know what? No problem. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm paying for it, right? Yeah, you don't. You don't mind, right? No, yeah, I'm you don't mind paying sure. for all this, right? Okay, cool. Uh, well, I think that was such a cool thing we did with our frequency separation. Uh, you know, in this case, we used it to get rid of that little line, but there's so many wonderful uses, and I really hope everyone out there enjoys that action. So, uh, be sure to go ahead and download that. Do that uh, like today or you know, as soon as you can.
because uh, we are going to be pulling that page down in about a day or two. So be sure to get that. That's just an exclusive for you guys for watching this video. Good deal. Well, I think we're looking really good. A couple of the other things that I'd like to do with our image, uh, zoom out here. Uh, you know, one, I'd like to just bring a little bit more uh, brightness into my subject's face, just on the highlights and the contours. And then I'd also like to bring a little bit more lightness into some areas on the dress and some color into the dress as well. Uh, I wasn't there on the day of the shoot itself, but uh, I wanna just add a little bit more vibrance to the dress itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off by bringing some lighter areas into our subject's face. A great way to do this is with a curves adjustment layer. So let's go ahead and grab our adjustment layers. We're gonna to go to curves, there we are. And I'm gonna click re here right in the middle and simply drag this up. There we go. Now what this does is basically makes my entire image brighter. So if I turn this off and on, you can see it makes my entire image brighter. Now what I want to do with this is I want this to only affect the light areas of my subject's face. I don't want this to affect the dark areas, just the light areas. I wanna enhance those a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is use a tool called Blend If to make this adjustment layer only visible in the lighter areas. It's one of my favorite tools in Photoshop. I think it's incredibly powerful and I'm happy to be sharing with you today. So what we're gonna do is double click right here on our curves adjustment layer. There we go. Now, if you see your layer style and some sliders down here, you're in the right place. So what I wanna do is again, I wanna make this curves adjustment layer only visible in the lighter areas. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and click and drag this little slider. So right now it just looks like one little, little cursor there, but if you hold Alt or Option and click and drag, it's gonna separate that into two little points right there. Okay, so hold Alt or Option. We're gonna click and drag this from the left to the right until I think that it blends it together with my image well, okay? And something like that is actually looking pretty good. Now, this isn't permanent. I can get back here at any point in time if I decide I need to, so don't worry about it. If it's not perfect, no big deal. Let's hit okay. Uh, turn this off and on. There we go. And you can see it's making the bright areas brighter. Now, right now it's visible on my entire image. We don't want that. I'm gonna invert my layer mask by hitting Control or Command I, and then we're gonna paint white on our layer mask just over top of our subject's face. And again, this is only gonna show up in the lighter areas, okay? I'll do this with my subject's back and the dress, you know, where I wanna bring just a little bit more detail to these areas that I thought were just a tiny bit dark. But it's just gonna affect the lights, okay? It's basically taking the lighter areas it's just making them a little bit lighter. Okay, it's kind of serving as like a really fine-tuned dodge and burn here. There we go. Now, keep in mind this is a curves adjustment layer, so I could lower my opacity, I can change my curves, like if it's too bright, I can make it a little bit darker if I want to, okay? You can fine-tune this as much as you'd like. There we go, and I think that's looking really, really nice. So there we have, let's just turn these off and on real quick. So we have more detail in our subject's face, but the image still looks natural. Now, one more thing that I would like to do here, I just wanna enhance uh, this color of the dress just a little bit. So I'm gonna create a new layer. We're gonna go to select and down to color range. Okay, and I'm gonna use my eyedropper tool and then hold shift to select a couple colors. Oh, but you know what I'm doing this? it's actually just selecting my subject too. So this is probably not the way to go. No big deal. What we'll do instead is grab a solid color fill layer. There we go. I'm just gonna go ahead and get a color. I, I can change it at any time. And we're gonna change our layer blend mode from normal. I'm gonna go with soft light here. So solid color fill layer, just change the blend mode to soft light. We're gonna invert our layer mask on that by hitting Control or Command I, okay? And then I'm just gonna simply paint white on my layer mask right over top of the dress because I just want a little bit more, you know, color there right over top of the dress. Now, keep in mind, you can change this. Oh, that's her arm, isn't it? 
And that's her arm. Okay, keep in mind you can change this at any time. Okay, so right now it's way too saturated, right? It doesn't look real. But I also want to note, and we talked about this earlier, anytime you're working with color, it's an important thing to think about your highlights, your midtones, and your shadows. And the big thing to remember here is that your shadows will always have lower saturation than your highlights and your midtones. So shadows are always kind of desaturated, always. Now, that is important when we try to do color work in Photoshop because this, what I did here, looks pretty decent, okay, at least on the highlights, but my shadows, look how saturated my shadows became. So saturated that they don't even look real, it looks fake. So I want to make sure that this layer is less visible on my shadows than it is on my highlights. And we can do that with Blend If. We just use that tool, so let's just use the same tool. So let's double click here. There we go. I'm going to hold Alt or Option and go from the left to the right to make this less visible in my shadows and more visible in my highlights. Okay, there we go. Let's hit OK there. Here's the before and the after. You can see how the after just looks more realistic. So less visible in your shadows. You want your shadows to be less saturated. So now what we're going to do is just double click here on our solid colored fill layer and I can adjust things. I could make it more saturated, which does not look natural here at all. I can make it less saturated, lighter, darker, and I can change my, change my colors as well. Okay, so I can simply bring in, that's a little bit too light. There we go. I can simply bring this in as a way to enhance my color just a little bit more. Okay, and in this case, I think it looks good, but just a little too saturated. So I'm just gonna lower down that saturation. There we go. I don't wanna go crazy with it, you know, but I wanna just bring a little bit more color in. Okay, I think that looks really, really nice. So what we managed to do is get rid of that line using frequency separation. And if you haven't downloaded that action, just go to flurn.com slash live to do that. And we did some work on our highlights. I think overall we're looking great. So let's go ahead and save this. And I wanna pop back into Lightroom and see what our overall before and after looks like. Okay, so let's get back here into Lightroom. There we are. All right, so there is our, that's our after. And then here, let's go ahead and just click on and we'll go all the way to the end all the way to the before. So let's just look at these two side by side. There we go. Let's just get rid of those things. So here we have, you know, from one image, this is not an HDR type of thing. There's nothing super fancy here. We were able to go from the image on our left where we really don't have much detail on our subject to the image on our right. We've added more information into these shadows. We removed any kind of like artifact or lens element they, you know, remember she had that thing on her back that it wasn't actually on her back. That was part of the, what happened with the light. Uh, but you can see we've done all that. We've warmed the photo up and we didn't lose any of that information in our background as well. So uh, we were able to recover a lot of that information. And I will say that, you know, we were given a raw image to work with. And especially when you have exposure adjustments you want to do, raw images really are the way to go. So if, you, uh, if you're photographing in JPEG right now, I highly suggest shooting in raw uh, because it gives you more leniency and when you have to do work like this, uh, it just your images will tend to look a little bit more natural. I think that before and after is great. Super happy with this live broadcast. It's about 1 p.m. So uh, are we getting ready to do our final giveaway? It's the big one. It's the big one. What are they gonna get, Mike? A Wacom Intuos Pro tablet? You got, so whoever's name we're about to call is gonna win uh, a new one of these, not, not the same one that I've been using for years. You're gonna win a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet, basically the same version that I use to edit every single one of my photos. Uh, and I've used many of these over the years. This one, it's the small size, by the way, it's the one that I prefer because uh, when you move your cursor around your tablet, 
that correlates to your screen size. So if you're interested in getting a tablet, I actually recommend the small one because you don't have to move your hand a lot. If you get a bigger one, you have to literally move your hand more to move around your screen. So I recommend the small one and the way I have it set up, you can actually watch, uh, we have a free tutorial on how I set my Wacom tablet up, but I actually have just this area here, just this top corner here enabled. Got a weird thing going on there. Uh, just this top corner I have enabled. I've actually disabled the majority of it. So if you're like, oh, I think a big tablet would be better. Well, that may be true for you, but that means you're gonna have to literally move your hand a lot more. I've got most of my screen, most of my tablet disabled. So when I wanna move around my screen, I'm just doing this. I don't move my hand, like my wrist stays where it is. I just do this and I can move around my entire screen. Pressure sensitivity, it's fantastic. Uh, so you're going to win a Wacom tablet, and why not? I'll just throw in a Flurm Pro subscription for a year also. Uh, so you're going to win a Wacom tablet. We'll throw in a year of Flurm Pro subscription, every access to every tutorial we've ever recorded, and we'll send you some nice swag on the way. So you can you can wear a Flurm pin, uh, and you can match with me. You can send me pictures, and we'll be, we'll be buddies. How's that sound? <laughs> We're going to be internet buddies. It's a great live broadcast. We did some really cool stuff so far. And I wanna thank everyone for submitting your images, by the way, thank you so much. This is just a fantastic opportunity. I love getting to interact with you and, and hang out with you on a live live little chat here. So fun for us and I hope you guys enjoyed this as well. All right, we have a winner. We have a winner? One sec. I can't wait, I need to know who it is. The anticipation is literally eating at me. It hurts. It hurts, me too. It hurts you too? Yeah. We're all hurting over here. <laughs> it's just a pain situation. Justin is the winner. Justin who works here? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, we gave away all of our prizes to the Flurn employees. Uh, Justin, congratulations. Uh, you just won a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet as well as a year of Florin Pro and some wonderful swag. Uh, such a wonderful prize pack. If I had gotten that when I first started learning Photoshop, boy, who knows what I'd be doing today. Probably not teaching Photoshop. <laughs> Florin might have existed already back then in this hypothetical situation. But anyway, congratulations, Justin. And I want to thank everyone for joining this broadcast we are going to be going live again today from 4 to 6 p.m that is central standard time we're going to be doing the same amount of giveaways so that everything that we gave away during this live podcast flurm pro subscriptions bunch of swag a walk them into a tablet we're also going to be doing that as well what does that say you want to keep going you want to do one more photo keep going no i think i think uh i think it's time to i think it's time Yes, that was a great uh, question there. I've actually, yeah, what I'm going to do is as soon as we end this broadcast, I'm going to go home and help Katie uh, take care of some things at home. And then we're going to come back to the studio right in time for the broadcast. So Katie is, uh, she's, my, she's my partner. We are legally bound together with a contract. <laughs> wow. that's how I describe her oh, yeah yeah we are <laughs> as far as taxes are concerned we are the same person so very romantic uh, thank you so much for joining this live broadcast I've had a fantastic time if you got it in your schedule join us again at 4 to 6 p.m. we're gonna be editing completely different images showing you new techniques and we're gonna be giving away all kinds of new fantastic things and don't forget to download that frequency separation action right on flurn.com slash live. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll flurn you later. I wish I had something else to throw at you here. I'll throw a sticker at you. That worked really well. Bye, everyone. <laughs>